Well, this is the day the Lord has made. We need to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to welcome all of you to Second Baptist Church, a house of hope for our online worship experience. My name is Pastor Todd Johnson, and we are excited to share with you the good news of Jesus Christ, to lift up his holy name, to go before his throne in prayer, and to receive a word that will enrich and encourage our hearts. Yes, our world is in challenging times, and we are not able to worship in the manner that we are used to here in the sanctuary, but we can allow the word to go forth. So I look forward to this worship experience online. I can't wait to share the word of God with you today, but I want you to know that we have designed today's service to be unique and engaging, but a little bit like Sunday morning. We've enlisted the help of our deacon ministry and our ministers to give us some of the same elements and experiences that we have every week here at the House of Hope. So I want you to stay tuned and follow along as Minister Moore and Reverend Hall lead us in scripture and in prayer. And then our worship team will come to you. Yes, our worship team will come to you with a powerful time of worship followed by our altar time. That's where you can make an altar right in your own home. You don't have to come to the front like we do on Sundays. You can make your altar right there and Deacon Flanagan will lead us in prayer. I believe God is going to do something awesome in this place today, in your home today, in our hearts today. Let's get ready to engage God. This morning our scripture will be coming from the 121 Psalms. And it reads, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May the Lord have blessing to the readers and hearers of this holy word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Please bow with me for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, Lord God. Father God, we thank you for the blessing of a new day, Lord God. Father God, we ask that your Holy Spirit will come into each and every one of our households today, Lord God. That we will allow your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to take control of this worship service today, Lord God. May we experience the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit and the love and the mercy that you're extending to each and every one of us, Lord God, as we may be in our homes, households of faith, or wherever we may be, Lord God. We just ask that your Holy Spirit will be with us, Lord God. Please give us the power, Lord God, that we need to be able to let loose and allow your Spirit, Lord God, to just have its way within each and every one of us, Lord. Father, we ask that you would just Give us a worship like no other today, and that your pastor, Todd Johnson, Lord God, will be able to inv invoke your love and your presence in our hearts and reveal to us what your spirit has given to him for us this day, Lord. Father, we love you and we praise you and we thank you for this opportunity for your church who cannot gather together in person, Lord God, to be able to gather as one in your spirit. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And let the church say amen as well.
to go through before you got here this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's already, already. getting better. forsaken nor his begging bread. So whatever the devil tells you, tell him, hey, it's already getting better. Maybe it didn't happen today, but it's going to happen. Look at the person sitting next to you and tell him, say, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Whatever you have, I want you to name it. I want you to claim it. And I want you to believe it. And I want you to speak that thing. Speak it into it. 
us bow and have a word of prayer. Well, kind and gracious Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for who you are and what you have been in our lives, God, Father. And Lord, we know that as we sit here today, Lord, and face what we as a nation, as a world faces, Lord, we know you are still in control, Lord. So Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, you just please grant us peace in our minds, peace in our hearts, Lord, peace in our spirit, God. Father. For Lord, you are the author and finisher of our faith, Lord. And though we might not know what the future holds, kind of Father, we know who holds the future. So Lord, we just depend on you and hold on you. So Lord, I pray right now that you just please touch us, Lord. Bless us and smile upon us, kind of Father, as we face what we face this day. But Lord, we know that everything will be all right as we continue to hold to your unchanging hand, Lord. And just let you lead us and guide us, kind of Father. Lord, I pray now that you just bless, bless all the saints in the world today, Lord, that are, are your children, kind of Father. For Lord, we know that you are with us, for you told us you never leave us nor forsake us, kind of Father. So we depend and stand on that promise this day, kind of Father. Lord, I pray that you just bless, bless all the churches, Lord, because we are close today because of this pandemic, Lord, but we still want to give your name the praise, the honor, and glory, which you are truly worthy, Lord. So Lord, I pray that you just touch each and every church, Lord, that opens in your name this day, kind Father. Lord, also as you just touch the sick and shut it in a special way, Lord. Lord, stand beside their bedside and Lord, keep your kind hand on the doctors and the nurses that do serve and treat them, kind Father. For Lord, I know it is you that guides them and helps to lead them in all that they do, kind Father. And let them know, the sick and shut it know that you are there with them in spite of what they might be going through, in spite of what they might feel. Lord, let them know that you are by their side and you are the ultimate doctor, Lord, and you have the final say in all that takes place. Lord, we love you and we bless you this day, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that you just bless the pastors, Lord, to stand in your name and proclaim who you are this kind of day, this day, kind of Father. Lord, just touch them and lead them, Lord, as they stand at home today also with their churches closed, Lord. But let them know, Lord, that they can continue to preach your word, kind Father, and, and lead their flock as you have placed them there to be the shepherd of that flock. Lord, we love you. We bless you, Lord, and we will continue to bless your name this day. For, Lord, you are the all-knowing, ever-present, never-changing, all-powerful God, kind Father. And we thank you, and we rest on that this day, kind Father. Lord, we we love you, we thank you, and we bless your name this day. And my prayer is, kind Father, that you just please keep your kind hand on us and your loving arms around us this day. These and all blessings that I do ask in the name of the mighty, holy, righteous Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, God bless you. I pray that you enjoyed the worship experience so far. I want to thank Minister Moore, Reverend Hall, and Deacon Flanagan for sharing in our worship service from the comfort of their own homes. And to be able to use those worship clips from previous services adds an extra boost of God's spirit and God's anointing in our time together. But right now, I want to get right into the word with you. I believe that God has a word for us that will not only bless us, but it will bolster us and embolden us in his name. So I want you to go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. That's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to re read from the King James Version. You can read any translation or version you would like. Once again, that's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. These are, are the words of Paul to his young son in the ministry, Timothy. He says, Therefore, thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier." Today, I want to speak to you from the subject, pressing through a pandemic. Pressing through a pandemic. It is no mystery that we are in perilous and unprecedented times. The very fact that I am preaching to you from an empty sanctuary, the very fact that I am streaming live to you on a Sunday morning instead of preaching to you in the House of Hope, just gives us 
that much more reality to the circumstances that we're dealing with right now. There are some of you who watch us all the time. Maybe you work on Sundays or you live out of town, but for most of us, this is quite strange. But I believe that even in these circumstances, God has something for us that can keep us through this season and that will encourage us, keep us focused, keep our hearts strong, and keep our minds stayed on him. In this particular passage, where Paul is again speaking to this young minister, seeking to encourage him to build him up, he's doing it under some particularly perilous realities. Paul himself is writing from his imprisonment, and unlike other situations he finds himself in, this is not going to end well. Uh, he is not going to receive clemency or a pardon. He's, he's going to die there. He's going to meet his fate, his end. And he's almost sending last words, salutations uh, to the young ministers that he has been raising up and giving instruction to and planting and encouraging in the faith. And Paul is speaking from a certain position of, of finality, if you will. He knows that his time has run short. He knows uh, that the end is near. And he wants Paul, uh, excuse me, he wants Timothy to hear a few final instructions. And one of those instructions is in this particular chapter where he begins to point out different figures that Timothy can relate to and that Timothy can learn from. He, he talks about a soldier. Uh, he, he talks about a, a gardener or a vineyard keeper. Uh, and then he talks about an athlete. And I'm not going to focus on all three of those, but, but what I do want to do is focus on this soldier. I want to focus on this soldier because to be a soldier means to throw yourself into nearly impossible situations. It means to be willing to be under fire, to be under violence, to be under threat, to have bullets whizzing by your head and uh, to have bombs being dropped on wherever you're at, yet still be focused and firm enough to carry out the mission that you've been given to do. A soldier is someone who is commissioned, which means once they sign up, they no longer are their own. They no longer uh, make up their own agenda, set their own schedule. They don't get up when they want to. They don't go to bed when they want to. They don't even eat when they want to. Some of them might not even go to the bathroom when they want to because once you become a soldier, you become an agent of that government or that organization that you have joined yourself to. Those of you who have served in the military, no matter what branch, you know what that's like. Once you get on that bus, once you get on that plane, once you get to boot camp, there's nothing else like it. They let you know you're not in mommy and daddy's house anymore. You belong to that drill sergeant. You belong to that commander. And as long as you're enlisted, you are required to follow along with the program. And Paul speaks to Timothy in those types of terms. And Timothy, knowing not only uh, what warfare is all about, but in particular, the particular, uh, how would you say, authorities that were over the region at the time, the Romans, he had a particular familiarity with the hardness of a soldier. Uh, when it, men gave themselves to be Roman soldiers, they were conscripted and they might be conscripted for up to 20 years and give their lives uh, to the empire. And, and they would have to go to faraway places and sleep in holes and, and try to find food where they could, all in their, in their loyalty to their emperor, all in their loyalty to their king. And, and Timothy is no stranger to this. He knows what Paul is talking about when he talks about a soldier. And Paul mentions this soldier and three particular things that a soldier does that Timothy has to do if he's going to be a faithful witness of Jesus Christ. The number one thing he has to do is he has to endure hardness. He has to endure hardness. The number two thing he has to do is he has to avoid entanglements. And number three, he has to aim to please his king or his emperor. That's what a soldier has to do. And that's exactly what Paul is mentioning to Timothy. But I wouldn't be right. I wouldn't be a good teacher if I didn't give you some backdrop. You see, in the first few texts, Paul calls Timothy his son. And he encourages him to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He knows how tough the road is going to be for Timothy. But he also knows how important the mission is that the gospel go out as it was declared it would when the, uh, when, when the promise was given, even there on the day of Pentecost, that the word of God, that the spirit of God 
will go out not just in Jerusalem and in the province of Judea, but in Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. And Paul knows how important this is and that even though his journey is coming to an end, Timothy's is just beginning. Those who are coming after will have to carry on the mission. They'll have to take the baton and continue to push forward with God's kingdom agenda. And that's why Paul mentions it's not just about you, Timothy, but it's about those who you're going to come in contact with. My brothers and my sisters, what we're going through right now is not just about us. And it can be real easy to just think about yourself in a time like this. Will I have something to eat? Will I have a job? Will I be able to find toilet paper or Lysol? Or will I be able to go out and get a meal for my family? But it's not just about you. It's also about others. I have to be aware every single day that my children are watching me. They know that there's something going on in our world. They know that people are stressed out. They, they know that daddy isn't going to the church every day like he was before. They, they, they know that they're out of school for weeks and they might be out of school for the rest of the year. And they're looking to me to see how I will handle it, how I will respond. And Paul says it right there in the text, Timothy, not only is your faithfulness, not only is your diligence going to be important to your witness, but to those that are around you and to all of those you teach. And brothers and sisters, our hardness might not be the exact same type of hardness or struggle that Paul and Timothy were talking about, but we definitely have our own right now. We're sitting at home and watching a sermon from our homes, from our porches, from our bedrooms and our living rooms because we're going through a hardness right now. And if we're going to be good soldiers, hear me now, we've got to learn how to endure hardness. Now, I got to tell you something that might be a little bit of a struggle for you to hear. But Christians are not exempt from trouble. Just because you're a believer doesn't mean you are shielded from anything ever going wrong in your life. Matter of fact, I, I don't mean any shade towards anybody. I don't mean to criticize anybody, but I, I have to correct even my brothers and sisters in the gospel who have declared that if any sort of sickness comes or if any sort of uh, tragedy comes or if any sort of worldwide trouble comes, that the church won't be harmed. No, we're going to suffer too. We're going to go through. We're going to hurt physically, emotionally, financially, mentally, and sometimes even spiritually because of what's going on. If you read your Bibles, you will see that all types of people who serve God still went through troubles. Just the fact that they served the Lord didn't shield them from going through problems. Matter of fact, that's one of the biggest lies we can tell people is that if you just come to Jesus, everything will be all right. Nah, my dad would let you know that when you come to Jesus, all hell is going to break loose. You become the devil's number one enemy. You become hell's target and you're still susceptible to the struggles of this world. You're not immune from the coronavirus. Yes, God will protect his people. Yes, God will protect his saints. But just like any other illness, a believer can get sick too. You're not immune to job loss or financial hurts or, or, or stay-at-home orders. Listen, brothers and sisters, don't go disobeying our, our authorities. Don't go out there living foolishly and doing things you shouldn't do just because you claim to believe God. Believing God also means walking in the wisdom of God. So we're going to have to learn how to endure this hardness. It wasn't long after Jesus was crucified that the Jews uh, tried to rise up and fight back against the Romans. And around 70 AD, Jerusalem was crushed and burned to the ground. Paul talks about the church suffering from famine and begs other believers to send offerings and monies so that they might have some resources. And Paul right here is dealing with his own struggle. His faith in Jesus Christ will not save him from the Roman prison. No, he has to endure hardship. He has to endure hardness. And for many of us, this season is hard. I'm not just talking about having to figure out what to do with your kids all day. I'm not just talking about running through all your Netflix movies and you're not having anything to do. I'm talking about the feelings of isolation that you might be going through. I'm talking about the worry of whether that job will be there when you get back. I'm talking about the wondering of whether we have capable leadership in our nation that will guide us through this pandemic and hopefully we come out all right. And then what kind of new reality will we see when we get there? That, that's a hardship. Matter of fact, the worst hardships are not the ones of the body, but the ones of the mind. 
And all of us have to deal with that sometimes. Paul says, Timothy, you need to endure this hardship. Second thing he tells him is that you need to avoid entanglements. He says, no man that warreth entangleth himself, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Now, now let me warn you, there's a difference between being entangled and being engaged. You need to be engaged in this life. You should take care of the necessary things that all of us have to do. We have to go to work. We have to earn money, pay our bills. We seek out relationships. We have career goals. Or maybe you want to go to college and finish your degree. It's good to be engaged in the things that will cause you to have a fruitful life and a strong witness for God, even as you go about your daily routines. But it's a whole other thing to be entangled. That means you are so wrapped up in trying to get ahead. You're so wrapped up in trying to make another dollar. You're so wrapped up in trying to find a mate that you forget about what's really important. You forget about your soul. You forget about your mental and spiritual health. You forget to pray because you're so busy trying to inbox somebody to look cute on Facebook. <laughs> you, 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 you forget to worship because you're so busy checking out the latest superstar or celebrity gossip. You might even forget to spend time with your friends and your family because you're too self-consumed and you're, 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 you're too focused on what you want and what you need in the moment. We have to be careful we don't get entangled. Let me tell you in this season that it feels like we're being bombarded with bad news and with daily updates and, and all types of increasing statistics. Can I just give you a little tip? Uh, I could save you the next seven days of news. Everything's shut down, the numbers are growing, and we can't really go out and be and do what we're used to doing. There. You don't have to watch CNN or MSNBC or listen to the governor or the president for the next seven days because the news really hasn't changed. We just have to buckle down, hunker down, and be careful, watch this, we don't get our minds entangled in all of the bad news. The bad news ain't going nowhere. We have to ask God to guard our minds, to guard our hearts, because the proverb writer says, out of our hearts, out of our minds come the issues of life. And here's what happens when you take in and entangle yourself too much in the affairs and the trouble of this world is pretty soon you make other folks problems your problems. It's not up to you to figure out what the whole world is going to do. It's not up to you to know how many people are sick in California. That's not for you to try to take in. What you need to do is try to take, ask God, what is the wise and prudent thing for me to do right now? But if you are taking in all this other stuff, your heart and your mind will be too confused to focus on what God is saying to you. I am begging you, my brother and sister, don't allow your mind or your heart to get so entangled in the trouble of this world that you can't hear from God. You've got to spend more time in his word in times like these. You've got to spend more time in worship in times like these. Yeah, you need a movie here and there, TV show here and there to keep your mind occupied and distracted, but you can't let too much garbage get into your spirit in this season. Don't let this be the time where you start to let your guard down, let your spiritual guard down, let your gates open and let just anything come in. Just because you run out of shows to watch don't mean you should be watching all them crazy shows and perverted shows and corrupting movies. You still have to guard your mind from entanglement. Live your life. Love your family. Strategize on how you're going to make it through this season. But avoid entanglements. And finally, uh, Paul says to Timothy, a good soldier aims to please the one who called him to be a soldier in the first place. Now, can I tell you, there's a couple points of good news in there. Number one, you actually have the ability to please God because God would never instruct us to do anything that he hasn't equipped us or enabled us to do. That means that my little old self is insignificant and unknown as I might be. He has put it in me to be able to please him. And so I have to make it my aim, I have to make it my goal, I have to make it my endeavor to please God. Here's the second piece of good news. I aim to please God because he called me to this place in the first place. He called me to be a soldier. He drafted me into his army. The real spiritual sounding word is he grafted me into the family. When I wasn't 
uh, a part of the kingdom, when I wasn't in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, when I wasn't washed in the blood, he had mercy and grace on me. He saw something in me. The songwriter said he thought I was worth saving. So he came and gave his life. Uh, he thought uh, I was worth dying for. The same one who I'm aiming to please is the same one who called me so that I might please him. I, I, I have to aim to please God because that is what the Bible calls my reasonable service, to present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. It, it, it's not a strain. It's not a stress. It's not meant uh, to be some extraordinary endeavor. It's something I should do with my everyday life. So, so isn't that good to know that, that, that God has made it so that we can please him and that God has called us to be his soldier. It's good to know that even in my house, even in my living room, even while I'm following these stay at home orders, even while I'm furloughed or laid off from my job, I can still please God. This is gonna be tough, but God is calling us to press through this pandemic. We can't control what's going on in this world. We can't control what our government leaders are doing. We can't control what the news is saying, but we can't control where we put our focus. We can control how we fix our minds. We can control what we allow to come into our hearts. And brothers and sisters, I am begging you to only worry about what you can control. You can control how wise you live. You can control what you choose to engage your mind in. You can control what kind of crazy phone calls or text messages you choose to respond to. You can control that Facebook page and that Twitter feed. You can, you can turn that off and log off for a while and take a break. You can control you calling and encouraging your brothers and your sisters, checking up on our children and our elderly to make sure they're okay. You can control that. Don't worry about what you can't control. Please know this. God is in control. I want to leave you with a few things that I believe this season is going to do for us. And I want you to take this in, write it down, because this is what I believe God is going to draw out of his saints in this season. This pandemic season, this stay-at-home season, uh, this topsy-turvy world that we're living in now. Here's the first thing. This season for the saints is going to breed ingenuity and creativity. We're already thinking of new ways to send the gospel out, new ways to stay connected. I, I have to figure out new things to do with my kids every day. People are going to have to figure out new ways of building careers and lives and socializing with one another. But that's a good thing because God who created us also placed the capacity of creation within us. We are ingenious vessels. We are creative vessels, but sometimes it takes pressure to push that out. I believe that pressing through this pandemic is going to breed ingenuity and creativity. Second thing I can tell you it's going to do, it's going to help us break our unhealthy dependencies. Some of the things that we have come to trust in as our source and our supply have been broken off of us and we have come to have to depend on God. Even coming to church, you know I love service, can't wait to see you again in the sanctuary. But you can't allow corporate worship to be the only source of your relationship with God. You can't allow Sunday morning to be the only time you read your word. You can't let some preacher be the only source for where you get inspiration from heaven. You can't let some praise team or choir be the only time you worship. Listen, you can take a good thing and create an unhealthy dependency out of it. Matter of fact, I think that's why some of my brothers and sisters might say, hey, it's a good thing the church is shut down. It's a good thing that we can't do what we normally do. I don't always agree with some of the criticisms, but I can see a point. I can see that some of us get so stuck in the routines and the ruts of just coming and sitting and saying amen and dropping that dollar in a bucket that we forget what a precious gift it is to worship together in God's holy house. Finally, I believe that this season will bring about a new intimacy with God. It won't just breed ingenuity. It won't just break unhealthy dependencies, but it will bring about a new season of intimacy with God. 
The same Paul who tells Timothy, you're going to have to endure hardness like a good soldier. You're going to have to go through tough times. You're going to have to deal with struggling situations. Is the same Paul who said, this is the God I want to know. Not only in the power of his resurrection, but in the fellowship of his suffering. And you got to be careful what you say, saints. Be careful what you pray for. Because when Paul said he wanted to know that, God said, well, I hear you. You're going to suffer. <laughs> You're going to go through some stuff. You're going to deal with some struggles. But what it will do in the midst of it is it will draw you closer to him. Why? Why? Because God is in that place where there's pain. He's in that place where there's hurt. He's in that place where there's strife. He's in that place where there's confusion. Uh, he might not make those things. Uh, he, he doesn't want to see you go through those things. But the good news is he's with you in the midst of those things. And when you know he's with you in the midst of those things, like those three Hebrew boys who were in the fire and Nebuchadnezzar and the soldiers looked in and said, we think we see four. Why? Because it looks like the son of God, looks like the son of man has come and joined them in the fire. That, that's where you're at right now. You didn't just go through this just to have a hard life. No, God designed for you to draw closer to him through this struggle. Don't miss your moment. Don't miss your opportunity to draw closer to him. Pray more, read more, worship more, meditate more, rest more, detach and unplug from things more, and watch this season bring you closer to God. Listen, my brothers, my sisters, we don't know if this will be a few more weeks, a few more months. It could be next year before we're back to normal fully in our nation and in our world. But here's what we do know. That everything we're going through, God already knew we would approach this moment. He, he already knew that March 22nd would be my last time preaching to a sanctuary of people for a few weeks. He, he already knew it. We didn't know it. We, we've been scrambling. We've been making last minute arrangements, investing in technology to catch up with what's happened when God on the throne already knew. And for what he already knows we're going to go through, he's already made provision for us to get through. So you might not believe it because you see that bank account dwindling. You might not believe it because you feel you're susceptible to this illness. But I've come to tell you, God has empowered you and enabled you to press through this pandemic. No matter what comes, no matter what goes, you can be sure that God is with you. If you don't know Jesus today, if you just stumbled on this live video and you've never developed a relationship with Jesus Christ, I want to invite you via Facebook, YouTube, or whatever platform you watch this on. I want to invite you to know him today. How can I get to know him? He seems so far away. All you have to do is do what Romans 10 and 9 says. You have to confess and you have to believe. You have to confess and believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he is God's only begotten son who was sent here to die on the cross for your sins and for mine, that he shed his blood and by the shedding of his blood, our sins are washed away when we seek forgiveness and repentance through him. And when we believe that he rose again on the third day, we are believing that he has the power and the authority, that he has put all things under his feet. You might be scared, doubtful, worried, and discontent. I urge you to put your hand in his hand. Just say, Father, forgive me. Have mercy on me. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and the work upon the cross. I renounce my sins, and I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. And you can be saved today. You don't have to wait for the doors of the church to open up again for you to walk in. No, the doors of the church are open right in your living room, in your car, in your bedroom, in your kitchen. God's kingdom is open wide to you. Oh, I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to see you and celebrate your new life in Christ. But please don't wait for another Sunday to come to walk down an aisle or to shake a deacon's or a preacher's hand to say that you're saved. Salvation doesn't know time and space and place. Jesus will meet you right where you are. And to the rest of you who are 
seeking a church home or just seeking a little bit of comfort, you are welcome to connect with us at Second Baptist, even though we don't meet physically. Send us an inbox to our page. Email us. Find some way to connect with the body of Christ so that even though we're separated, we can still walk in covenant together. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that God brings peace to your heart. I want to pray that God brings courage to your mind. I want to pray that God gives you the words of comfort that you need to hear in this moment, in this time. I want to pray that he opens up your bowels of compassion so that somebody around you who might need a special touch or might need a little bit of assistance or a helping hand might find the hand of God through your act of kindness. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you and we bless you. For even though we are apart from each other, we feel your spirit with us. We know that you are the God who created the heavens and the earth. And that though this world seems like it's been turned upside down, you still have all things in your hands. Lord, we know that worry and fear has gripped our nation and our world. We know that every day our world leaders, our national leaders, even our local leaders are striving to keep up to do the very best they can to guard after the welfare and the well-being of their citizens. Give them wisdom. Give them insight. Give them a cooperative and, and wise spirit so that they might come to the very best to end and make the very best decisions. But Lord, when all of those earthly powers and authorities have met their limits, we know that you are God and God alone. We know that you are holding us up right now. So I pray for peace in the hearts of your people. I pray that you restore our joy even while we're cooped up in our homes. And I pray that even though we're stuck at home, that our, our minds don't feel restricted. I pray that you guard us from being entangled in the chaos of this world. I pray that you help us to endure the hardship of this moment. And I pray that you instill in us a desire to please you, to worship you, and to know you better than we did before. Father, to that brother, that sister that doesn't know you as their savior, I pray that you draw them closer to your heart. Reveal to them the plan of salvation by Jesus' work upon the cross and allow them to experience that precious regeneration that comes by the power of the Holy Spirit right where they are. We look forward to the testimonies that will come that somebody has come to know Jesus even through an online ministry. And Father, before we close, we pray for your church, your worldwide church, the church that spans the globe from grand cathedrals to hidden underground bunkers where believers meet in secret because their governments don't allow them to worship openly. We pray for every pastor and minister, every priest, every person who has to make the hard decisions of being separate from their congregants because of what's going on in our world. We pray that you would sustain and uphold those churches and their operations and, and yes, even their resources and finances so that they might be able to continue to help their communities, to look after the frail, the elderly, the widows, the children of their communities, and continue to contribute to the spread of gospel work and compassion ministry all around our world. Bless Second Baptist Church and all of our members, all of our brothers and sisters at many other churches of all types and stripes. Keep them, protect them, look after them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. When we were children, they taught us a little song. And I saw Tyler Perry did a little challenge on Facebook and he challenged some superstars to sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. I think now more than ever, we have to have that childlike faith. My own family, the Johnson, started a little thread and we started challenging each other to upload our own little videos and say that he has the whole world in his hands. And it was so funny hearing from some of my cousins, male, female, even some of the coolest guys I know in my family, sing that little simple phrase. He's got the whole world in his hands. I want you to trust that. 
I want you to know that. I want you to believe that. Even though we're online, you can still participate in the life of our church by giving. So if you would, please, continue to give your tithes and your offerings. You can give online at www.secondbaptistwarren.com. Or, as a member of Second Baptist, you can reach out to our church, your deacon, or, or one of our office staff, or even myself, and we'll make arrangements to make sure we receive your offering. Times are tough, but the church must roll on. Just this past month, we served over 130 families, groceries, in such a perilous time as this. Not only that, but we're looking after and calling on our elderly members to make sure they have everything they need. One said, hey, I just need a gallon of milk, and our deacons took it out to her. That's what ministry means in these times. So please continue to give. Give not only uh, because we're in a tough time, but give because God's word commands it. If you don't go to this church, if you're not a member of Second Baptist, but you still want to sow into the ministry, you can go to our website and you can sow into the ministry so that we can continue to do the work that we've been doing for over 100 years. And I believe God will bless us for our faithfulness. God will bring fruitfulness to our lives and he'll allow us to experience his favor even in unfavorable conditions. This is Pastor Todd Johnson coming to you from Second Baptist Church. I hope you enjoyed our online worship service. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.